you. For loving us, for dying to set us free, you are good, you are good, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, Lord, lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit, and we give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks, in Christ's name. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. And amen. All right, so we're in Paul's letter to the Colossians, and we're in chapter 1. We talked yesterday about knowing the will of God. Uh, and today, um, Colossians 1 for this reason since the day we heard about you, verse 9. Verse 9, Colossians 1, 9. Okay, and we're using the NIV international version, new international version. And here we go. Uh, for this reason, okay, so um, we're starting off uh, from uh, the context of the time when Epaphras first brought the gospel and what a sweet moment that was for everybody. Um, so from that, that time when, they, when the gospel was received by you immediately and um, uh, the, the church was literally fired up with the spirit, um, since that time, we have not stopped praying for you so from your inception uh, in the Holy Spirit, through the gospel, is not stop praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving full thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. There's a sentence for you. <laughs> for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loved, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. All right, so we heard about your salvation. It was a great thing. And we're praying for you. <laughs> and the we talked about the we there. That means there's more than just Paul praying for him. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding the Spirit gives. So, um, so we have wisdom and knowledge and discernment here. Um, knowledge is knowing the supernatural stuff. Wisdom is knowing what to do with it. And discernment is, is this of God or not? So, the, their prayer constantly is that, the, that these people will be continually filled with the Spirit, that they'll continually be, grow in the knowledge of God and His will, and that, and that they will continue to have wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So the relationship with the loving creator of the universe is eternal. There's, there is never any time that we can know all that he knows or think all that he thinks. But he loves us to be in his presence along that journey so that we can know him better today than we did yesterday. And this is Paul's yeah. prayer for these folks, that they'll grow up in all of these knowledge and wisdom and the knowledge of his will and an understanding. Good morning, folks watching. We're grateful you're here. Right. So that <laughs> it's interesting that we're going to sow that there. Mm -hmm. What kind of word is so that? Well, in this context, it's a conjunction. It uh, it's a phrase, conjunctive phrase that um, 
follows that. It follows from the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, you might say, results in yeah. a life, or that the hope is that it results in a life, uh, that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, okay? Pursuing Him in knowledge, pursuing Him in wisdom and understanding. Uh, you live a life worthy of the Lord. This is not saying you're earning your salvation through knowledge and wisdom and understanding. This is just saying that as you gain in these capacities, that uh, your worthiness grows. The scripture says elsewhere, um, study to show thyself approved. Okay? It's not you are approved. It's past tense. You are approved. It's to show that approval that uh, you would study and in studying gain the knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Uh, and the result is not only that um, uh, it, uh, it makes you worthy or steps up in your worthiness. I mean, he accepts you. I mean, he's already accepted you. He's already forgiven you of your sins. So your worthiness, the baseline Worthiness is is rock solid, but if you want to improve that, improve on that status, then these are the capacities you want to develop: knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and in the result, uh, uh, you will be uh, pleasing him. You will please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. So not just doing godly things, uh, which is a good thing. But it's even better if those godly things result in fruit, actual produce, that uh, spiritual produce that um, um, are, uh, again, developments in the spirit. Um, okay. And so again. It's, it's an it's a infinite loop. So we're praying that yeah. you grow in all knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And that you may live a life worthy and please him in every way, bearing good fruit and growing in the knowledge of God. It kicks us back in. If, as we grow in knowledge and wisdom and understanding, uh, it produces good fruit in us, which is pleasing to God and uh, world changing to the world because our life is changing. And if your life's not changing at all, then you have to go, okay, God. Uh, change my life, make me the kind of man you want me to be, the kind of woman, whatever. So you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. So bearing fruit includes watching souls get saved, and it also includes love, joy, peace, patience, the Galatians verses, that, that as we we, we don't we don't emphasize kindness per se, but as we walk with the Lord, kindness should be a direct fruit of that. Like uh, we we grow in grace, we walk with the Lord, and because of His presence, the fruits of the Spirit show up, and uh, and that allows us to continue to grow in grace and knowledge and peace, and. So it's a, it's a full loop there. Yeah. Strengthen the power according to his glorious might, being strengthened, uh, so that you may have great endurance and patience. These are again, the future comes through full. This is obviously through maturation, through, mat through spiritual maturation, having uh, improved your endurance. Your patience, uh, patience is a uh, key virtue. It comes up so many times. Uh, it's not easy to have. It's, uh, it's difficult in a fallen world with a fallen body. But uh, it's certainly um, <clears throat> a prized possession when you've earned it. Uh, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you, qualification being your recognition of the Messiah, uh, your recognition of his agape. Right. Uh, if you see that in the Lord, I mean, if you see him, 
Uh, as Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Um, it's, it's that level of uh, definitive um, declaration that he is the one. That's the qualifier. That supersedes the law, the prophets, the poets, everybody else. Uh, it's the most important thing to recognize that, to recognize his agape, especially and particularly the agape of the cross. Uh, those are the qualifiers. Uh, and if you do that, you share in his inheritance. That's and, where we are. We're, amen. Okay. And Paul, yeah. Paul is laying out here that it's God's power by his might that we might have endurance and patience. So, and so 2,000 years ago, Paul knew that this church in Colos needed to know about great endurance and patience. And the way to access this is by being in the presence of God, growing in knowledge of him and wisdom and discernment, and, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you. So often we don't give thanks. Uh, so often we just, we take from God and say, what's next? <laughs> Instead of stopping to say, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Amen. For, 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 in, in times where we need great endurance and patience, it is really hard to give joyful thanks to the Lord. Be no. but, but the universal truth of his death and resurrection of the cross is stable, whereas your life situation may be good, bad, whatever. So concentrate on what is stable in the universe, and that is the death and resurrection of Christ. And that allows me, us, to give joyful thanks to Christ because of what he has done for us. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. So, uh, like 5,000 million books of theology in this paragraph. Yeah, all of that. I, I, yep. I just made up that number, but I like the sound of it. So, he has rescued us. Like, so often people in the world, until the Spirit comes upon them with conviction, doesn't know that they need to be rescued. But once it's revealed to you that we are sinners and separated from God, then we can say, oh, I need a, I need a redeemer. Uh, I need a rescuer. And, oh yes, there's Jesus there. So, yeah. redemption is a, is a glorious word, but we probably soften the use of it in modern conversation. We think about redemption as getting a nickel back for your body. Uh, it is so much more than that, that in, in the culture of the day, if you didn't have enough money to pay somebody, you became their slave until you could pay it off. And uh, unless you have uh, a kinsman redeemer, and we see that in the lovely story of Ruth, uh, that, they're, that they can buy us back from the captivity of our sin, from the, uh, the debt of our sin. Uh, so what an amazing, amazing uh, couple of verses here. Amen. Yeah, honestly. Uh, yes, yeah, one compound sentence that just, uh, it's like uh, an effort of, on Paul's part to uh, um, essentially uh, develop the entire theology. What, what, if you were asked, how would you develop the entire theology um, in one sentence? <laughs> I suppose this is, this is as good an answer as any. It's mm -hmm. not just a, th a theology, but it's not so much theology. It's the, um, it's the MO, the modus operandi, the, the actual 
living it out, living it out, living out your faith. You started um, from day one with these people, uh, and he's talking about the whole plan of the various events that strung together here, resulting in this uh, maturation process, this sanctification process, uh, and the things that have to be considered along the way. Um, structured into one continuous phrase uh it's quite a work there you go and pull to digest but uh, you know this is paul this is what he does <laughs> there you go let's try it in let's try it in amplified um so nine to fourteen and amplified please fourteen or nine colossians one nine through one nine. Through verse. Okay, here we are. Paul. Yep. yep. Colossians one nine amplified. For this reason, okay, and starting from the uh, the events that began with Epaphras, the beginning of the church, since the day we heard about it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, in all spiritual wisdom with insight into his purposes and an understanding of spiritual things so that you'll walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, displaying admirable character, moral courage, personal integrity, to fully please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing in the knowledge of God with deeper faith clearer insight and fervent love for his precepts we pray that you may be strengthened and invigorated with all power according to his glorious might to attain every kind of endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints that's god's people in the light capital l 13. Verse 13, the incomparable Christ. For he, capital H, has rescued us and has drawn us to himself uh, from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice resulting in forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sin's penalty. Amen. Wow. Lord, we thank you. We ask a great grace to ponder on these verses this day, that they would change yeah. us and we could make a difference in a desperate and dying world. Have your way in our lives this day. Give us perfect peace. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you again for your instruction here, Lord, for the directives that, uh, that uh, also eloquently composed uh, through your Holy Spirit, so much here that uh, we have to uh, embrace, to mature with and through, looking forward, looking toward pleasing you or growing in you and being fruitful to your praise and glory. We may uh, fully develop. Uh, sorry, I've got a distraction going on here. That we may fully develop uh, in your work in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Blessed day, all.